All right, it's Chris from IndieSoup.com. And you know what? I missed the television broadcast of the Indy 500 on Sunday. You want to know why? Because I was there. I was there in turn three. It was awesome. It was so incredible to be there. I drove 2,000 miles to be here, there, and it was just amazing. Amazing, amazing day. Amazing race, if I can use that term and not get sued by ABC. All right, so now you may be wondering, hey, this doesn't look like Open Wheel Weekly. I do not look like Lindy Thaxton. Well, that's probably true. I don't look like Robin Miller either. But since there's no Open Wheel Weekly this week, the week after the biggest race of the year, hmm, versus not enough advertising dollars versus, I don't know. Not a problem here at IndieSoup.com because I'm coming at you from the IndieSoup Studios, which, well, it's actually the dash cam from my Honda CRX that I drove 2,000 miles to go to the race. Um, it's actually not a dash cam. It's my iPhone taped to the dashboard. But that's what we do around here. We're on a low budget. We're kind of on a no budget. I will advertise. I will do product placement for anybody willing to send in their advertising dollars or support any kind of cause. But since the phone's not ringing, not getting any bucks, but I'm doing it anyway because I do it for you, the IndyCar fan, because guess what? I'm an IndyCar fan. All right. Now, to the race. Oh, and by the way, I am coming uh, at you, not live, but almost live on YouTube from Hilliard, Ohio, which is a suburb of Columbus, Ohio, which is near Dublin, Ohio, which is where Bobby Rahal's from, the 1986 winner. And it's not really anywhere near. It's actually directly across town from New Albany, Ohio, which is where Graham Rahal, our third place finisher, was from. Second place last race in Brazil. Guys moving up on the podium. Passed the field. He and TK passed the field like twice. It was amazing. We'll get to that in a second about the race. Uh, but first of all, let's get to some of the pre-race issues. Now, one of them involved the, of course, the double file restarts. Uh, people were concerned about that. Some of the drivers, Marco, and uh, and some of the fans, and certainly Robin Miller was probably hoping for uh, lots of controversy and crashes and all those things that he likes. Uh, but uh, didn't seem to be the case. Now, each Viso kind of crashed out one of the first restarts, and while that is not a surprise unto itself restart or non-withstanding, um, it, it definitely happened and not too many other people got taken out as read all of somebody else's mistakes. Now, wow, the pre-race show was awesome. We saw the Marmon Wasp go around the track driven by Parnelli Jones and a lot of people on their minds and hearts were with Simona Di Silvestro. Now she had that fiery crash in practice, ended up qualifying on Saturday, got in the field with her backup car, now, we wondered if there were going to be some issues with the car, or her, or her hands, and didn't get off to a good start, kind of went backwards, early pit, and was definitely running slow, and pulled herself out of the race. Uh, now, I don't know if there's a problem with the car, or if it's something going on inside the helmet. Now, either case, I don't blame her for backing out. I, 20 years ago to the day of that race on Sunday, Broke my back in a plane crash, and I've been in a wheelchair ever since. It was 20 years ago. And um, I don't fly anymore. No. I mean, I'll fly commercially, but that really doesn't count. But you won't see me in the cockpit. I'm in the cockpit of the Indy Soup Special, all right? It's a Honda. Okay. Now, moving on, the Sam Sch Schmidt Motor Sports, which is difficult to say six times swiftly. Uh, la, la, la. Uh, wow. It went from a magical month to kind of a tragical day. Not tragedy in that sense. But huge disappointment that Tag's car kind of went out, stepped away. I don't know what, uh, what happened. It got looser or tighter or more neutral or something or uh, just not as fast as it was all month long. And that was a real disappointment. The crowd was really uh, uh, heartbroken to see Sam Schmidt's number 77 entry fall back in the race like that. But, uh, but he put on a good fight. Uh, and also SSM had Townsend Bell, who qualified fourth and stayed in the top five for about half the race and I don't know what happened with him I was in turn three uh, I heard that he had a crazy save uh, at one of the turns uh, to rival Sebastian Saavedra's save during qualification um, wow I think we all have gray hairs over that one but uh, and then he had an altercation with uh, with Briscoe that I you know, I haven't seen the replay okay I was there all right so uh, so we'll get to uh, get to that and uh, and the other story is the Ryan Hunter Ray number 41 A.J. Foyt car that Bruno Junquera qualified in 
And then Ryan Hunter Ray took over because of the sponsorship and blah, blah, blah. Didn't really seem to be a factor in the race, so it was kind of an issue about nothing. And some people on the boards were saying that it's like just desserts for both parties involved because AJ's team didn't do all that well uh, in the race either, uh, either, including the number 14 of Vitor Mira. So being that as it is, I don't know if it was a good move for the sponsors, but as a consolation, RHR was driving so slow that you could actually read the sponsor stickers on the car, so maybe it wasn't a bad day for Snapple, Dr. Pepper, blah, blah, blah. And why am I mentioning those names? I shouldn't because they're not paying me. All right, so let's get to, let's get down to business. Let's get to the race itself. Wow, incredible seeing the parade lap, again with the Wasp, Mario in the two-seater, AJ in the pace car, the field of 33, coming three wide. Uh, just words do not describe, okay? I don't care what in-car camera you have or what the commentators in the booth are saying or what angle on the track the camera is. Nothing beats seeing it and hearing it and smelling ethanol live, okay? That's why I and 350,000 other people were there. Truly amazing. Cannot put it into words. Probably can't even do a, a mime or interpretive dance that would, would somehow communicate the emotion, the intensity, and the fun and the pure joy that was there. Now, speaking of crowds and Tony Kanon, TK and Rahal moved up through the field like three times. They passed dozens and dozens of cars. I know there's only 33, but Rahal made 67 passes. Do the math on that one, and a couple of them were on the outside, so how about that? But when TK moved up, the crowd really, really cheered. We had a very much a crowd favorite in Tony Kanon with the KV Racing Technologies entry. And sorry he didn't get up that far uh, towards the end. You know, it was looking like it could have been his day. And then, well, you know, it was looking like it was going to be Panther Racing's day. You know, Bridesmaid, 08, 09, 010, and now 011. Not much to say about that. I was in turn three, saw him coming around, last lap, the crowd is on their feet, everyone's cheering. Here it is, a rookie. National Guard car, Memorial Day, an American guy, nice guy, got a little high, a little in the marbles, and what can you say? Well, I guess you could say a lot of things, but this is a family show, so I'm not going to say them here. All right, so Dan Weldon, what? Okay, he was probably just as surprised as anybody else is that he won the race. I mean, totally a factor. I mean, he was in the top five all afternoon, qualified in the top nine. Of course, definitely a front runner but never led the race um, until about the last, I don't know, 1,200 feet maybe. But those are the feet you want to lead when you're running a race, especially one like the Indy 500. So hats off, but I'm going to leave mine on, to the William Rast sponsored Brian Herta Autosports, uh, receiving technical assistance from Sam Smith Motorsports as well, uh, with Dan Weldon bringing her home with a 98 for a victory. Incredibly exciting. I'm sure it was awesome on TV. I'll have to watch the TV when I get back to LA in a couple weeks. But for now, I'm still, I have this goofy smile plastered on my face from an amazing day, an amazing race. And this is Open Wheel Weekly Alternative. This is Indie Soup. We don't sleep around here, okay? We don't care about advertisers. We bring you the news, we bring you the show, we bring you the racing, we bring you the commentary, we bring you the talking heads. In this case, just one talking head. That would be me. And we will see you next time. But you know what? Speaking of media, I just want to give a little shout out to the bloggers and the tweeters, some of them the same people. Really did a great job of covering the qualification weekend as well as the race weekend and all the festivities in between. Got pop-off valve, got more front wing and uh, of course IndyCar Advocate, um, and everybody from the boards from trackforum.com, <laughs> amazing commentary, some really funny jokes, and a couple of mean-spirited things, but that's always fun too, you know. Um, and wow, how about IMS radio broadcaster Jake Query, the Twitter king of the universe for that weekend. I don't know, he must have sore thumbs by now, but wow. Uh, a lot of people covering the race, so you know what, Versus, if you don't get it together, NBC, Comcast, you too, so what? We're going to cover it, okay? We got you covered, because we're here for you, the IndyCar fan, which is me, and this is IndyCar Soup, and we'll see you again next show, or next race. Could be Texas. I don't know. Could be a sign. Maybe I'm going. All right, we'll see you again. 2011 Indy 500, so amazing to be there. 
So amazing to be here with you right now. We'll see you again. Bye.